Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in this one we're going to be starting our second rebuild in MLB The Show 18, and we are going to be taking control of the Los Angeles Dodgers, and um, they're pretty much the opposite of the Baltimore Orioles, which was the first team that we rebuilt on this channel, and uh, the Dodgers are ranked first overall, they have the highest team budget, and all around they are a very well-built team. Um, and it's not really going to be so much of a rebuild because obviously they really don't need that. Uh, they're set up for success right now. Um, but it's more going to be like a, a retooling or, or just, you know, a renovation of the team. We're just going to be fixing up a few, a few, uh, areas on the roster that may need some, some work. Um, maybe it's, maybe it's some players are a little old, maybe some players are, um, you know, their salaries are, are a little, are a little heavy. Um, you know, we're just going to try to make this a, a very good team with as little, with as few, I'm sorry, as few holes or weak spots as possible. And of course we are going to be trying to win them a world series as they are in a 30 year drought, I think. And, uh, you know, they've been consistently good every year, um, but they still haven't gotten that ring. So for them, that is going to be our goal. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so we're here at the roster screen. The season has yet to begin, and I've already gone over the roster a little bit on my own, uh, but I wanted to briefly go over uh, like where it is right now with you guys and, and kind of just give my thoughts on, on anything that might need to be changed or improved upon. And um, quite honestly, this team is very solidly built. Uh, they really don't have a lot of weak spots. They're, they're good in their pitching, they're good in their offense, fielding, um, depth even. The, the one area that they're a little bit weak in is overall team speed, which I really don't think is going to play uh, you know, too much of a, of a part in our game. Or I, Actually, I, don't, I really don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Um, this team isn't necessarily built around having speed as their main game, so again, I don't think it's going to be a problem moving forward. Uh, one thing we could do is just, if we make any trades moving forward, um, on the offensive side of things, maybe look for a player who has a little more speed to their game, uh, just help bump our rating up as a team a little bit more. Um, but again, I really don't think that's going to be too much of an issue for us. Um, but again, overall, the team is really solidly built, not a lot of weak points. Um, the main things that I'm looking to do are get rid of some older players, guys who might have larger contracts that I don't really think are um, worth <laughs> what we're paying them, um, because even though we have such a high budget, um, you know, I don't think we need to always be right at the top of that. Um, we definitely want to come down just a little bit. Um, and three guys right off the bat that I noticed that I definitely want to move, whether it's for uh, budget, whether it's for contract reasons or just because of age. Are Chase Utley, um, who, <laughs> being a Mets fan, I'm not a big fan of his, but um, you know he is getting older. He's decline. He's going to decline even more. Um, he really doesn't do too well very often in this game. So we do want to move him. Um, another guy that we might look to move is Ryan Madsen. Um, though exactly when I'm not sure because I'm not a hundred percent sure on how quickly he declines or how much. Um, so we will look to move him at some point, probably. Um, and another guy is Rich Hill, who actually has a, a, a lot of a lot of money uh, on his contract for this year and the next year uh, at 13 million. So we may look to move him, though his rating overall is really high. But because he's 38, I'm expecting him to decline rather quickly, um, or at least potentially decline rather quickly. So it's kind of like you want to keep him, but because of his rating, but he might actually come in, come in useful in his trade value um, before he starts to decline. So we probably will look to move him. Um, and those three guys are the main guys. I might look to move Ryu because I don't really think we're going to be using him. Um, just because we have so many guys ahead of him. But um, yeah, that's really, that's really it for those guys. Another issue that I noticed in the bullpen is we really don't have too many lefties. We have uh, Scott Alexander, but his potential is a D, um, which is a little odd for his overall rating of an 80. 
Um, he's 28, so he might still improve, and uh, the potential may go up. He may not necessarily decline because of that, um, but it, you know, it, it is a little worrying just to have him as the only lefty in there. Um, we do have Singrani, but you know, his control and walks per nine, and even clutch, is a little low for my liking. So I may not look to have him in, at the major league roster. We may even move him if if we can at some point. Um, so we would like to get another lefty in here. And then the bigger problem here is the infield, um, because Seager in real life uh, was is hurt for the majority of this year. Uh, they went and got Machado, but um, in the game he's not. Well, he is, but I put him on the 40-man roster. Um, but, you know, we may be looking to move one of these guys on the infield, and it may be Machado. Because um, we got Turner at third, Dozier at second, Bellinger at first. We even have Muncie. Who, uh, who is a potential starter. Um, Freeze is a solid backup. Um, but between Machado and Seager, I think, in my experience, Seager tends to do better over a longer period of time um, than Machado does. Machado tends to decline at a little bit of a surprising rate, um, or maybe just in terms of how soon it is that he declines based on his age. Um, Seager tends to hold out for a while, so, um, plus he's two years younger than Machado, so we may look to move Machado, um, and hold on to Seager. I just want to see his salary, which is a lot more than Seager's, so that might be a, a good, good option. Um, yeah, so we may look to move Machado, definitely going to move Utley, um, like I mentioned, try to move Hill and potentially Madsen, and then maybe Ryu. Uh, we got a lot of um, prospect pieces that we can use in trades um, that might not break the squad for us since I am planning on only going about three years with them because they're built to win right now. Um, we got prospects in Verdugo and Kendall. Um, another guy is Jackson here who's a little bit older for his overall rating but he's still got a lot of potential. Um, we have two solid catching prospects in Ruiz and Smith um, and then we got a bunch of pitching prospects. Uh, a couple of relievers down here a little bit older in floro and i'm gonna call him jt just because i'll probably butcher his name um as well as ferguson who can also be a potential starter for a team once he's able to develop a little bit more um who else uh may santana uh, mitchell white alvarez um alvarez is a guy we might look to hold on to for right now because he may be able to develop enough to be on the major league squad maybe in that third year um as well as sierra here who is a little bit older but um he probably could make the bullpen by next year i'm thinking um but yeah that's those are the main the main issues and um what i've noticed about the team just in the beginning here so before we jump into the regular season I'm going to look to try and find a few trades to address those uh, those issues that I brought up. And um, once I find those, I'll meet you guys at the trade screen. So our first trade uh, before the season starts is for that left-handed reliever in the bullpen. And we're going to go after one of the best in Andrew Miller from the Indians. Um, so he's really going to come in and be able to, hopefully be able to uh, really, you know, lock down that bullpen. Um, really, be really good to have that second lefty in there, especially one with a, a track record like Miller's. Um, and he's also a potential closer, honestly. Uh, if, if anything does go wrong with um, Jansen, I don't think it will. But um, just to have that potential backup um, is really nice to have. Uh, but we're going to be trading over for Andrew Miller. We're going to be trading over uh, Rich Hill, who, again, his contract is just... Uh, it's it's a lot um it's a lot for a 38 year old regardless of his overall rating because like i mentioned it is likely that he declines um we're going to be trading him as the main part uh we're also going to be trading uh, one of our top prospects in uh, a catcher keeper ruiz who um in real life i think he is if if not in the top 100 he's very close to the top 100 prospects he may be in the top 100 um, I know he's a very highly rated catcher. Um, and then we're also going to be trading Dustin May, a starting pitcher, starting pitching prospect who's only 20 with B potential, um, just to help get that trade, um, make, make it doable for the Indians. 
Um, so yeah, we're probably going to be looking for another trade to make. Um, we definitely want to fill in that fifth spot now in the rotation because uh, moving Hill does open that up. Um, and we do want to look to trade Machado and Utley still. So we'll probably look to make that another trade for them and uh, to fill in that rotation spot. And uh, once I find that, guys, I'll meet you back at the screen. So for the second trade, uh, the main thing here is to address that starting rotation spot that we opened up by trading Rich Hill. And uh, in trading away Machado, we want to make sure that we get a lot in return. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we need to get, you know, three guys for Machado. Um, so we are going to trade with the Blue Jays. And in return, we're going to get Aaron Sanchez uh, to fill in that rotation spot. He's 25, the potential 82. Um, he does, you know what? No, his durability is not that bad. Although, he, in, you know, at least in real life, he tends to get hurt sometimes. Um, but... You know, he's only 25, so he has potential to improve, and he is from California, so hopefully that'll help bump him up a little bit more. Um, his control and walks are a little bit concerning, but I'm willing to give him a go um, in that number four or five rotation spot. Um, so hopefully that works out for us. And then in addition to him, we're also going to be getting uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr., who is a beast in real life. And he really turns out well almost all the time in these uh, simulations in this game. So we're going to be taking him for the future. He probably won't break the squad this year at all. Um, but definitely, definitely we'll see him next year. Um, and in return to them, we're going to be giving up, uh, obviously, Manny Machado. Uh, just because of that infield uh, logjam that we have going on. And um, we're looking to trade him anyway. Um, we're also going to be throwing in Chase Utley, who is someone that we were looking to move as well. Um, just based on his age and his his uh, imminent decline, <laughs> um, I should say. And then just to get the deal to go over, uh, we added in pretty much our lowest rated player on the in the organization in first baseman Luke Raley, who's 23C potential. Um, like I said, just to get the trade to go through. Um, so yeah, this really fill this fills in that rotation spot that we needed, and um, it gives us a lot of uh, potential there in the infield for the future. Uh, especially since we're trading away Machado and um, you know Turner usually lasts um, holds up for a while uh, but you know I'm not really sure if we're gonna look to sign Dozier just because everyone's gonna be costing a decent amount of money um, and we also have Muncie there so um, Guerrero Jr. really uh, helps us out in the future moving forward and Sanchez potentially can do that as well as along with uh, filling out the rotation spot um, in the present. So hopefully this helps us out uh, this year as, as well as in the future. It works out overall for us. Um, we are trading away Machado, but you know, it's something that I feel we need to do right now. Um, but yeah, uh, that should be the only other trade that we'll make. And um, as long as there's no updates that we need that I need to uh, let you guys know about, uh, I will see you at the draft. All right, so a quick update here. Uh, Turner has just sustained a broken ankle, which he will be out for about one to two months, which is not good to see. He's one of our bigger bats in the lineup. Um, another injury that occurred at the beginning of May was uh, Matt Kemp went down. I forget with what, but he's also out for one to two months. Um, we called up Kike Hernandez from Triple A, and we have him and Peterson platooning in Kemp's spot in the lineup. Um, but as for Turner, we're gonna put him on the 10-day DL. Um, I'm not really sure exactly. Um, I don't want to call up Guerrero just yet. Freeze is already up. Um, we could slide Muncy into third base. What's Dote now? Yeah, we'll probably put Muncy at third base. It's just a question of who do we call up. Um, I'm trying to see who we have. We have who plays first and third so we might be better off you know what we might end up be we might end up calling up Solano um, just to fill in I know it's not like a, a a great name to be bringing up but he's doing okay in AAA right now he plays second and short which is the area that we would need to have a guy play who to call up um, he also plays third and um, you know he's a he's a decent player. He's played in the majors for he's have he has three years of service. So you know he is someone who 
who can probably hold his own. So I think we're going to be calling him if we have to add him to the 40 man roster, of course. Uh, so we're moving him up and we're going to move Muncie into the three hole, not the three hole, into th on, ah, into the third base, third base position. I can't talk. Uh, um, yeah, so we're going to put Muncie in the th at third base. Um, fill in that DH spot again with somebody else and we'll probably just have to I'm, I might have to rearrange the order because I don't know how I feel about Muncie being third in the order and um, Having two lefties back-to-back -back against lefties um, So I'll have to check that but yeah, just wanted to update you guys out. I'm gonna fix the lineup and hopefully there'll be no other injuries and um, If that's the case, I will meet you guys at the draft Okay, so whole, literally about one to two days later, uh, right after we fixed up Turner's injury, we have another serious injury. This one is even for an even longer amount of time in Aaron Sanchez with a dislocated shoulder for two to three months. Uh, that's really not good. Um, I, I don't, I'm not entirely sure what to do. Um, I don't, you know, I, I, I want that solid fifth starter unless Bueller... You know, we might end up calling up Bueller or Urias. Probably Urias. Um, just because he do, he has played in the majors before. Um, you know, I mean, we could always call up Ryu, but both of them are doing really good. And I don't want that to necessarily... You know, because he's upset about being in the minors. He's upset about being in the minors. I don't want them to have that affect them too much. So, I thought this was going to cause more of a problem. But I think we'll just be calling up Urias. Uh, to be in that fifth spot in the rotation and um, Yeah, we'll see how that works out. We're just gonna adjust that so we can oh No, we're not wait. Hold on yours will probably take the fifth spot then Which makes sense because he is the lowest overall rating. Um, I just don't want to have I mean technically from the fifth starter to the first starter is back-to-back -back lefties, but I usually like to break it up a little bit um, But yeah, that's uh, that's resolved um, hopefully, again, hopefully there's not too many more injuries. Hopefully Sanchez comes back and uh, can help us down the stretch. Um, but yeah, again, hopefully I will meet you guys at the draft. Okay, we're really having a lot of trouble here. This is not good. Literally a day later, uh, in his first start, as you can see up in the le upper left-hand corner of the screen, you can, you can see what he did, uh, which really wasn't that great, but he ended up getting hurt after two innings. He has a sprained elbow ligament, so one to two weeks for him. Um, you know, I what 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 is going on with the injuries, guys? Oh my gosh, Tolls is out two to three months now. Wow. Okay, so we got. Okay, thank God it's not another forty-man roster player. Oh my goodness. Um, so okay, first of all. We need to call up another outfielder. Goodell's doing pretty well down there. Um, and he's the only other... Oh, he's not even on the 40-man roster. Why did I think he was? Um, you know what? We're going to call him up anyway. We're going to put him on the 40-man roster and call him up to the major leagues to fill in for tolls. Um, and now we need to find... You know, I didn't want to bring them up just yet, but since Bueller is also doing well, he's not doing as well as Arius was in the minors, but he is doing very well. Um, I think we're just going to call him up because I really don't want to go out there and make any trades just yet. And I really also don't think there's anyone in this, you know, free agency that we're going to pick up. I just picked up Alvarez for the Orioles uh, rebuild, so I really don't want to pick him up just yet so soon. Um... You know, we want to try and get different players in these different rebuilds and see how they perform and all that. We don't want to just have the same guy, guys, um, you know, that we know how they're going to perform. And it's, it's, you know, it's not as interesting to see uh, play through. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to leave it at that. Uh, we just got to adjust the rotation. Probably move Stripling back to the four spot. Um, or not, actually. Bueller will probably go in the fifth spot. And um, for the lineup, who was it? I think he, he Tolls was just in that DH spot. Um, I do need to 
change Muncie potentially, but he is doing good. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't really know. Um, we'll, we'll think about that one for a minute. But um, for the DH spot in place of who was it? Place of tolls. I'm forgetting things. Um, versus righties. Uh, do we really have a decent option here? Um, not exactly. I think. I think Solano might be the best choice. So we're gonna put him in a DH. And again. I'm really hoping there's not going to be any more injury updates, but um, hopefully I'm going to see you guys next at the trade deadline. Not the trade deadline, the draft. Alright guys, so here are the results of the 2018 draft for the Los Angeles Dodgers, and it's nothing uh, nothing too crazy here in terms of our results. Um, I did let the CPU handle the scouting just because I'm terrible with it, and I tend to get better results with the CPU doing it on its own. Um, at the beginning of the year, before I did anything else, I did go and sign the best scouts that I was able to get, so um, hopefully that helped us out. Uh, now, like I said, it wasn't anything special, this, this draft, for us. We probably had a very low pick um, behind a lot of other teams to start off, um, so maybe that played a part in it. But two guys out of the six we are not going to give contracts to um louis knots or a lever 19 and he's a c potential um some of his stats were just very low and i didn't really think it was necessary to to offer him a deal um and stephen nottingham who's 20 second baseman he's only a, a d potential he did have some decent stats but because of his potential and his already his overall is already a d potential i really didn't think you know if anything he's probably going to decline very quickly so i really don't want to offer him a deal um he's also not going to be very useful in a trade with that with the potential that he has um we did offer a deal to ramon acevedo he's an 18 year old right fielder um he's c potential um he had some decent some decent attributes here um and the same for rodrigo saldana who's a starting pitcher he's 18 uh c potential as well um they both have some room for development and you know for their age they they do have some decent uh some decent attributes here so um we offered them each a deal along with edmund Hanna, who's a first baseman he's 18 he's a 86 potential so b potential but he's overall a 60 right now so he will improve for sure um and he already has very good power ratings um surprisingly a good bunter uh, decent durability, but he does need to work on a lot of the other areas in his game, like fielding, um, his plate discipline and, and vision and clutch, and his contact rate. And then lastly, we had Joel Chassin, who's a starting pitcher. He's 18. He was our first round pick. He's a potential 85, so a B potential, but he's already a 70 overall. And, um, you know, so one thing that stood out to me was his clutch, which was already at 59. A lot of guys that you'll see, even a lot of top prospects that they have in this game in real life, their clutch is very low, um, which is not always very good to see. Um, so that does pose a problem usually in terms of their development. Um, at least in my experience, um, it kind of slows them down. So that was really nice to see that his clutch was already, you know, kind of high. Um, but uh, overall, a good pick. I think um, I think he's going to develop into something good. So um, we signed him to a one-year deal. Now most of these guys, uh, they're really not going to be able to break the club since it's so there's so many good players on the club, and we're really only going to probably be doing three years. Um, the one guy that might have a chance is Chasin, um, unless we use him in a trade for someone else. Um, but most of them, if if anything, we're probably going to use them in trades, uh, like I just mentioned. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll try not to let them waste away in the minors, but um, some of them may, uh, just because of the timing of this of this um, simulation, and um, you know otherwise we'll try to use them in a trade. But uh, yeah, that does it for the trade in the not the trade that does it for the draft in uh, 2018 for the Dodgers. Overall, not too bad. Could be better, but um, you know we got a few picks there that are are pretty decent uh decent potential guys so um yeah that does it for this and um I'm hopefully i'm hoping there's there's not more injuries in our future but 
Otherwise, I'll see you guys at the trade deadline. All right, so quick injury update. Again, we uh, just lost Ross Stripling for one to two months to a fractured hand. Um, if you can see in the upper left corner, he was having a very nice year. I think it is his first uh, full year of um, being in the starting rotation. Um, so that is a shame to see him do so well and go down with an injury, but hopefully he comes back. Um, he'll definitely be back by September and um, probably sooner actually. Uh, and he'll help us down the stretch, but uh, we're probably just gonna put him to the 10-day DL and Call back up Walker Bueller to take up his position um, The lucky thing that we can look at is that Out of the five starters the two lower rated guys are the ones who got hurt um, Although they were well wow Sanchez was not doing good. Okay uh, <laughs> Urias is not really performing that well either, but um, we really don't have too many other choices. If, if Urias or Bueller continue to struggle at the major league level, we'll probably call up Ryu um, until Sanchez comes back. Um, you know, hoping hoping they can they can keep uh, keep improving. Um, but yeah, we're probably just gonna. Did, I did not call him up. No, I did call him up. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, we're just gonna put Walker Bueller in there. Uh, for the uh, the fourth spot in the rotation to take over for Stripling. And um, again, I will see you guys hopefully next at the trade deadline. So this is probably going to be the only trade that we're making at the deadline, uh, but we do need an outfielder because Kemp is trending downwards. And um, at the rate he's going, I feel like he's just going to continue to do so. Uh, he's not doing too terribly right now, but... Um, we could get more production out of his spot. Uh, so we're going to be trading him along with Tyler Goodell, who's really just in a depth role for us right now. Um, he came up once when there was an injury. Um, didn't do too great in 24 at-bats, but um, unfortunately we're going to be moving on from him as well. He will not be able to play on the same team as his brother uh, <laughs> anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to be having him in the deal as well, along with the relieving prospect of uh, Caleb Ferguson who can also be a starter because he's got 75 stamina but you know he's someone who c will probably develop into a nice pitcher um, definitely needs a few more years to develop um, or at least to do well at the major league level I feel like um, he is a 70 overall so you know we'll see uh, we are parting ways with two decent prospects or one decent prospect one young uh, outfielder who could uh, turn into something nice, but um, I feel like it's worth it. I feel like it's it's an okay trade for us, um, and we're gonna be trading them all to the Indians for Michael Brantley, who is 30 years old. He's got B potential. He is a very good contact hitter. Um, he does he walks a decent amount? He does not strike out very often, so he puts the ball in play. Um, he hits for a decent average or a high average. Um, he's not. I don't think he's a bad fielder at all. Um, not like I don't know if he's a gold glove fielder but um, definitely not bad by any means um, so yeah he's gonna come in probably be in that number two spot in the lineup we'll move Seeger down to Kemp's spot uh, so five or six and hopefully he'll be able to help um, help solidify that outfield for us and uh, the lineup and um, you know probably produce better than Kemp was so uh, this trade should work out for us and uh, he is a free agent at the end of the year so if we don't want to hold on to him or don't want to continue to have him on our team, uh, we are going to be able to just let him walk and receive draft pick compensation most likely. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the only trade at the deadline. And um, I'll see you guys at the end of the year. And we'll probably be in a playoff position and hopefully go for that, that World Series ring. Alright guys, so it is the end of the year and the Dodgers have won the division. Still ranked first overall in teams. And uh, the fact that they won the division really isn't a surprise. Um, they did finish with 110 wins, which was more than I expected. Um, 52 losses, which was good for a 679 winning percentage. Uh, the Diamondbacks won, got one of the wild card spots as well, along with the Brewers. Um, so we're going to be taking on wh whoever wins that game in the division series. Um, as for awards, we got, I think we had two. <gasps> Let's just let's just admire Jacob Degrom for a moment because uh, 
because he's so good. Um, yeah, but <laughs> we got the reliever of the year award, uh, Jansen, going again, third year, maybe more in a row. I'm not sure. Uh, but he had 60, so he tied the all-time record for single seasons for that uh, K-Rod, Francisco Rodriguez, had in, I think, 2008 with 62 saves. He had a 136 ERA, 81 strikeouts. He was really good really really good um but you know you, you never expect anything less than that from jansen uh very good closer he even had three blown saves um excellent season on his part um then we also i think we had a gold glove in puig yeah puig got the gold glove uh in right field breaking hayward's streak there um but nice nice job for puig uh, in terms of league leaders, uh, who do we have? We have anyone? Seeger hit 309. Um, Bellinger hit over 300 as well. Um, just go through some of the major categories here. Seeger hit 40 homers. Bellinger hit 36. Uh, triples. Seeger led the league in triples with 43. Bellinger was right there with 39. Uh, so Seeger and Bellinger both with really nice years. Uh, Bellinger with 113 RBIs. Seeger with 109. Um, Seager led the league in walks, one shy of 100. And uh, anything else? OPS, Seager and Bellinger are both up there. Slugging, they're both up there. Um, base, they are both up there, along with Grindal. So um, they really had, both the two of them really were probably the two biggest bats in our lineup this year. Um, as for the pitching side of things, Wood had 17 wins, Kershaw had 16, Maeda had 14 um, saves. We know Jansen led the league with 62. And uh, ERA, Kershaw was third with a 2.74 ERA. Um, along with strikeouts, uh, Kershaw had over 200 and led the league in whip as well with a one whip. Wood not too far behind, 1.12. Um, so yeah, nice, nice season by those two guys. Those two guys were seemed to lead, be leading the rotation for us, the pitching staff, um, or. Along with Jansen, of course. Um, pitching war, Kershaw was third with 5.4. Uh, batting war, Seager was number two with eight. Well, he was tied for first with Goldschmidt at 8.6, and Grandal with 6.5. So those were just some of the major, um, major league leaders there for guys on our team. Uh, I guess we'll go into the roster very briefly. Um, Kershaw with another very solid year. Maeda didn't do too bad either with a 3.33 ERA, a nice number uh, number two starter for us. Wood around the same, he was number three starter, uh, 3.34 ERA, over 200 innings, not bad. Uh, Sanchez, we ended up sending down to the minors because Bueller was doing very good for us, uh, but Chan Sanchez, excuse me, did struggle a bit. Um, in just under 100 innings, he had a 4.73 ERA. Um, Stripling had a very nice year. Uh, lowered his ERA even more after he came back from his injury. He only had one loss, 13 wins, a 2-6 ERA. Um, Bueller had a very nice rookie campaign with an uh, 8-3 record, 102 innings, 2.81 ERA. Um, so that was good to see. Urias struggled a bit with the 5-11 ERA. Hopefully he's able to come up next year and do a little bit better. Uh, in the bullpen, we had Miller. Uh, a little bit higher numbers than we're used to from him, at least over the past few years, but again, not, nothing less than a solid guy out of the bullpen, um, regardless. Uh, so nice year for Miller. Madsen, again, had a nice year, just like Miller, around the same ERA, same, uh, same whip? No, Madsen's whip was a little, it's about average, but it was a little, a little, a little high for him. Um, but he had a nice year as well. Uh, Fields had a solid year out of the bullpen. 2.65 ERA. Alexander, our second lefty, had a nice ERA under three. He had a nice year. Baez struggled a little bit with a 4.6 ERA, but hopefully he can turn that around next year. His whip was way too high, though. Way too high at 1.77. I think average is about 1. Point... I think I mentioned this in the Orioles rebuild, but I think average is about 1.3, 1.4. So uh, his whip was really high. Uh, I really would like to see him lower that. Probably has to do a lot with walks too. Um, a lot of walks for the innings he had pitched. And Goodell with a solid season. He tends to do pretty well. Um, and you don't expect it, but he tends to do pretty well. He's a nice piece out of that bullpen. Jansen we know had a shutdown year. Uh, great year by him. 
Grendel with a nice year, probably a career best, um, aside from his, at least average-wise, aside from his first, uh, his first um, appearance on the scene in 2012. Um, 23 homers, 285 average, very nice. Barnes, uh, he struggled a little bit in the second half, but he was a nice backup, backup uh, catcher for us. Nice on base percentage for sure. Um, Bellinger had a solid year, 301 average, 36 homers, 113 RBIs, almost 100 runs. Um, on base was uh, 383, OPS was 975. Uh, very nice year for him. Dozier, 25 homers at 256, 355 on base. Muncie, not too bad either. Nine homers hit 280. Nice on base as well. We get to Turner now at third base. He had a bit of a down year by his standards, but um, he was hurt a little bit. And, you know, I'm sure he'll come around and, and do a little bit better next year. Uh, Freeze, not bad off the bench. Seeger had a very dominant year. Um, well, I don't know what other guys have done, but, you know, he was probably an MVP candidate. Uh, 40 homers, 109 RBIs at 309. His on base was over 400, almost a uh, 1,000 OPS. Very nice year for him. Uh, Brantley did nicely. He didn't really decline or, or get any better when he came over, but he did hit nine more home runs for us, so he doubled his his um, his total there. Um, so he did nicely. His power increased for us. Taylor just under 300 for the year. Uh, Peterson. You'd like to see more out of Peterson, but maybe it has something to do with, with um, you know, he's not in the everyday lineup, um, so we'll kind of keep watch on him. Hernandez hit 222. Uh, you'd like to see that go up a little bit more. And uh, Puig, not a bad season. Um, his potential's going down, overall's going up. We'd like to see him do better. His power definitely was down. So overall, solid years by most of the guys there. Um... I think we're short in outfielder. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we are short in outfielder. What? Why? Hernandez, three or four weeks. So, who we call up? I guess Tolls. Head to the playoff. Oh, he's not eligible. That's not good. Um, <laughs> we don't have an outfielder. Ooh, we should probably fix that. All right. Um, anyway, we're going to pick up uh, uh, in the playoff race in the division series. I'm just going to fix up this roster real quick. And I'll meet you guys at game one against either the Brewers or the Diamondbacks. All right, so Arizona did beat out Milwaukee in the wildcard game. So we will be taking on the D-backs in the division series. As for the AL, the Angels beat the Red Sox. So the Angels move on and the Red Sox surprisingly have been eliminated in the wildcard. Um, so let's go into game one. We're just going to be simming these games until we're on... Um, Unless we're, we're in an elimination game in which we'll probably quick manage. Um, if we get to the World Series, we'll probably play through the last half inning um, to get the win if we get to that point. Uh, so just heads up there. But uh, let's get into this. Uh, game one, we lost. Game two, we lost. Okay. Um, time to quick manage. Wow. Was not expecting to be down 0-2 to the D-backs. Wow. Big surprise so far by on their part. Um, quick counts. We didn't need to do that. We're, we're quick managing, right? I completely forgot what I pressed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Quick counts on. Didn't need to do that. Okay, Wood. He's got to keep us in this. We are not going home today. All right. Taylor is going to lead it off against Godley in the first, and he strikes out. But Seeger comes up with a single. Bellinger hit a single, first and third, two outs. Brantley drives him in. one nothing us. Dozier struck out to the end of the inning. Wood with the first inning. He gets him 1-2-3. Grand Grandal with a fly out. Puig with a shot. Solo shot. We're up 2 nothing. Alright, Wood's taking the mound for the second, and he gets them 1-2-3 again. Seeger leads off with a ground out, and we're not able to get anything done in the third. All right, leadoff single against Wood in the bottom of the third. We're going to pick off just to make sure he doesn't try to go. And he gets a double play to empty the bases. Godly grounds out to end it. Brantley in the fourth with a single. Dozier can't get much done. We got Grandal with a walk. And Wood, Wood gets on with a walk. All right, Taylor, we can't get him in. All right, so Wood's pitching in the bottom of the fourth leadoff single against him. Two singles now. 
Goldschmidt is up and he lines out. We dodged a bullet there. Uh, McCutcheon flies out and Tomas lines out. Can we get any? We cannot get anything going. All right. So in the fifth, Wood has an easy inning. Brantley walks in the sixth. Uh, Dozier, nothing. Grandal walks. And we can't get anything going in the sixth either. All right. Um, Wood, single. Leadoff single against Wood. Marte walks. All right. Pop out on Jay. Uh, okay, Goldschmidt. Double play. Nice. Got out of it. All right. Top of the seventh. Taylor's leading off. Changed pitchers for the D-backs. Now it's Jake Barrett. Flew out. Pop out. Pop out. So nice inning by the D-backs pitcher there. Uh, Wood gave up a leadoff double in the seventh. We might be looking to take him out. We should have taken him out. All right. Um, not, not a good way to end things for him. Um, let's look to bring in Baez. Pop out. Fly out, gave up a double. Vila, of course, versus lefties. So bring in Alexander. Are you kidding me? No. Scott, what are you doing? That's not what you're supposed to be doing, man. Oh my god. Alright, let's keep going. Let's see if we can't come back. This game got bad real quick. Bellinger against Diekman struck out Brantley with a fly out Dozier singled Grandal with the ground out mm. Alexander walked Jay um, Let's just bring in Miller here. Oh, did we bring in the wrong guy? We brought in the wrong guy Don't backfire double play did not backfire at all McCutcheon how do you do against lefties? You're better versus righties. So let's bring in I don't want to waste the guys in the pen in case we do end up tying it up. All right, uh, gave up a single. Tomas single. Escobar single. That's not good. Okay. Um, you know what? We're bringing in Madsen. Come on, Madsen. One out, and he gets it. All right, Puig. Start the ninth. We're down four to two. Looking at the end of our season, 110 wins. Can we not put that to waste, please? Against Bradley, not good. Puig, grounds out. All right, pinch hit against the righty. Um, it's gonna be Peterson or Muncie, and I'm thinking that we should bring in. You know, what? let's bring in Peterson. Grounds out, Taylor. Singles staying alive. Seeger. Singles staying alive. We're not out yet. Turner, can you do it? No. With the strikeout. Wow. So the Diamondbacks have actually eliminated the Dodgers in the playoffs in the first round after a 110 win season. That is crazy. That is crazy. Let's see if the Diamondbacks can, uh, can push on, can get this get this World Series ring. Let's see what they do. We got Houston and the Angels against Nats and Arizona. Arizona swept the Nationals. Houston and Angels are tied at three. The Angels move on from the wild. The two wildcard teams, two wildcard winners are playing in the World Series. That's really cool. That's really cool. Let's see who pulls out on top. It's tied 2-2. Angels are up 3-2. The Angels have defeated the Diamondbacks in the 2018 World Series. That is that was that was a nice postseason there. The two wildcard teams getting it getting through to the World Series. Wow. You know, it's it's disappointing that the Dodgers had a 110 win season and they, they got eliminated. Um, you know, in the first round, they got swept, uh, <laughs> was not expecting that. I mean, I think part of that was, was my fault for not, for not being on top of it with the uh, pitching changes, but, um, you know, they just, they just did not get it done in the playoffs, unfortunately. Um, but we got next year, we're going to be going for it next year. The streak, the drought is now at 31 years. 
Um, so yeah, that does it for year one of our Dodgers, not rebuild, but um, playthrough, retooling, uh, renovation, I think I called it and in the beginning of the video. Um, and if you guys enjoyed this, uh, make sure to leave a like, uh, comment down below what you thought, or um, if you have any tips or suggestions or or anything you'd like uh, like to see me do or or um, change up or anything like that. Um, if you guys want to see me add in like the All Star Game or or a home run derby or any anything like that, or play a few games throughout the course of the season, kind of break it up a little bit more. Let me know. I'll be happy to do that for anyone watching. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, leave any suggestions um, for anyone watching. Leave any suggestions in the comments below uh, if you if you have any ideas for videos or if you have any tips or advice. Um, I'm more than happy to listen. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed what you saw, uh, feel free to subscribe um, for more content I'll have coming out, rebuilds like this, and probably some other types of videos moving forward. Um, I have some ideas and I've had a few suggestions here and there, but... Um, yeah, let me let me know guys. Um, and again, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Um, and uh, until season number two for the Dodgers, I uh, hope you're all doing well and I will see you guys next time.